What's up, creative faces? L up here. In this video, I'm going to show you real quick how to route Contact 7 within Studio One. It really don't matter which version you have. It's the same process as it has been, but I haven't did an updated version of this. And some of the reasons that you would want to do this is just so you can have control over each individual track. So real quick, we have a, a fresh slate. And so basically what we'll do here is, is search for contact seven. The correct way and it should pop up okay all right so this is contact right contact can handle up to 16 instruments which is pretty dope right I have a bunch of instruments and just real quick, I'm going to just throw some random instruments in here. Just double click. Also, if you bring an instrument in just by dragging it in, that also works as well. But you want to be careful not to drag in on top of one another because it will overwrite the inf instrument like I think I just did here. So we're going to go back in. Grab that other instrument here. Just bring that in underneath it. And it just depends on the size, the resolution, the real estate on your screen. You you may have to close in that just by clicking this icon right here. You can condense the size. And let's go with another one. Right. Now, if you're seeing different sizes, instrument sizes, that's because the older versions, or I'll say the other versions, other than the Play Series, I, I noticed that all of the Play Series instruments are a little bit more wide in terms of size. So don't don't be alarmed. They all work the same. They work great. There's nothing to be worried about. Um, let's let's try a fourth one. Why not? So add these drums in here. All right. So we got four in here. Now, the first thing you want to do, I already have mine routed, but I'm going to start over with you guys and show you how to do this. So basically what you have to do is come down here at the bottom, hit the where it says, okay, let's backtrack. Because I, I realize that some of you guys may not even know how to get down there because that might not be available to you. But basically, if you don't see anything down here, you have to come up here to the top, right? And look for what says outputs. Click outputs. It'll show up here at the bottom. So then we go to the plus sign. And what you want to do here is say you want to give a number of tracks that you want to activate. So you can go up to six. Actually, you can go beyond 16, but I just usually go with 16 because you can only put 16 in here at the moment. But I think you can put like the numbering. You can go beyond 16. The number of channels is associated with how many channels? Because I think you could do. I think you could do and like it, it allows you to go up to 16 channels but the channels it represents left and right right same with this you can go up to, you know crazy number but i may start with eight or i may go up to 16 but in in this instance let's just go with eight i'm just whatever right i could just go with four because we have four instruments but yeah let's just do eight and the two channels will be my left and right. And here I'm going to pick one. You know, you always pick the, the one and then, you know, following that. So that's one. And in my case, I'm just going to say delete existing channels before creating new ones. Now, if you have something going on down here, like ox or whatever, whatever the case may be, you might want to clear that away. Otherwise, it will just 
be more cluttered. It would be more going on down there. I believe it's on. It's going to always add some aux channels down there by default. But let's just say delete existing channels to create new ones. And it's up to you if you want to make this the default configuration every time you come in here. And that's why you guys saw these channels already in existence because I made these a default every time I load up contact. So I'm not going to check this. We just doing this for the sake of the video. So we have eight channels that popped up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And the numbers here at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, then the 15, 16. And basically the numbers together represents left and right. So just keep that in mind when you go in and you're selecting the routing situation here. So for instance, the first one should auto automatically be routed to one and two. As a matter of fact, all of them are routed to one and two because we have not moved anything. So stereo track one, two channels routed to one and two. And as you can see how this follows, right? All of them are two tracks and all of them are routed three, four, five, six. You know what I mean? It corresponds with what we got, what we see down here at the bottom. We're going to do the same for the, for the second one. Also keep in mind, if you don't see this, you have to click over to where this i icon i guess that's information i want to say that that's what that is but like here is the snapshot version i guess it's like a camera icon and when it's over here you're 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 going to see the preset of the actual instrument right so even if it would if it was the opposite way for you and you was wondering how do i get the the you know the <laughs> the presets as this is how you do that but in this case we're routing we're dealing with routing so we'll switch this over so we can see these other options so output we're going to go with three and four output here we're going to go with stereo three five and six you see how we're going about this and then output here we're going to go for the fourth one which will be 78 we only have four instruments right now also, the other thing is that, like, anytime you do things like this, contact will automatically route each track. It'll go from one, two, three, or four, it'll go up in numbers. So, say, like, I create something right quick, I come back here, and, you know, I want to add another one, right? The MIDI channel will just increase from where, wherever it was last. So, the MIDI channel here is one. So port A, one. This is talking to my, my keyboard now. MIDI channel two. You know, it's right here. And we can see it. See two, three, four. Now, these different sections is just for different ports. I only have one keyboard. I'm plugged into port A, and that's all I worry about. Now, there is this Omni thing here. Now, if you set them all to Omni, that what makes all of the instruments in here kind of like a, a multi instrument, a multi channel, meaning like it would trigger all of the instruments at the same time. It's also the same for selecting output one for all of them and to make all of them. So, cause some, sometimes I would do that, you know, if I want to like make two instruments do the same exact thing, you know, so it, there is reasons for that. But in this case, I want everything to be routed out separately. And so now everything should now be routed but there is a couple more steps that we have to do in order to make sure everything is perfect. So that's, we're pretty much done here. Well, actually, let's do this while we're here. See, Studio One here at the top will allow you to open these other tracks. And you can open all eight of them or you can open all of them. But why would you do that? I mean, you just will clutter. So what we're doing here is we're unlocking the extra tracks in the mixer area. That's what's going on right here. So real quick, we activated four tracks. And if I go here, I can see four. Now, the very first one does two things. It corresponds with the actual instrument, the instance of that instrument. And it also takes the first routing. So 
so I don't, I don't want you to get confused. This track right here is two. This one is three, and this one is four, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because they are stereo, right? I hope you still follow. So now that that's done, when we come here in the Ranger, now the Ranger section is a little bit different, right? Because this is something I would love to see change where the MIDI channel corresponds with the output, but unfortunately it doesn't work this way. Now, just because we have four different channels here at the bottom doesn't mean Right, so that's just one. So how do we get the other ones? So the easy way to do this is to duplicate. I have a key command. It's command D. I'm on the Mac, but it's the same as going here, right clicking and looking for where it says duplicate track. It's the same thing. So if I duplicate this again, and then I'm gonna duplicate it a fourth time or a third time, depending on how you see that. All right. Now, I am going to expand, well, attempt to expand this here so we can see everything. All right, so contact seven, so seven, eight, nine, ten. So what we did just now, we did not duplicate the instrument, right? It's only one instrument. All we did was duplicate. Now, you can't duplicate the instrument. I highly advise against that having four different instances of contact wouldn't be the best idea. Now, if you had four instances of the complete control, which is also a contact, so to speak, it's, it's not a contact, it's a complete control instrument that's, that talks specifically to your controller, that is a little bit different. But contact is a player that holds several instruments. Now, the complete control is an instrument that holds only one instrument or one instrument. I'm sorry. I put a plural on on that. Wow. But anyway, what we have to do now is say, OK, the event input or in some cases, this might say channel one or it used to say channel one. This one we have to say channel two or input two. This one is input three. And basically what we're doing is on these different MIDI channels, we're we're uh, routing them to trigger the different instruments in there. So this one, right, that's for that one and this one. And we can also see them if I, let's see if I can make this smaller. I guess not. We can see the MIDI. This kind of lifts up and shows us what's going on, and we also can see the volume. So I'm gonna just bring it down like this. Now, sometimes you gotta you gotta pay attention because if you if you if you hit a note, you 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 have to make sure. Um, the, these different instruments, especially dealing with acoustic instruments, they have ranges. So if you press a note on your keyboard and you don't hear anything, just like kind of fiddle with it because what Native Instrument does is they put the the range of the real live instrument intact here. So all the notes won't be available to you. So sometimes you have to like you have to increase your your octave. I think a different keyboard might say something different, but like I'll go octave higher or octave lower will will be you know where the notes are, and then depending on where you are, sometimes they will provide the acoustic noise like. You know what I mean, like what real live players do on, on the guitar or whatever instrument that is, sometimes they will add that in there. But in this case, right? 
So we can see that the this instrument is coming out. It's coming out on the third one here. And we can see the volume here. And we can also see the volume at the bottom if we activate it again. One other thing you could do that in terms of like labeling, you can go in and do this. You can go, there's three different places you can label everything. I just dropped my phone. So we, we definitely know this works. Uh, let's see. So the, so the guitar and then let's just call this one drums. Now you don't have to do this, but it is a good practice just to keep an eye on everything. But I don't think you will be worried that much about like what well, maybe you would I don't know um, let's just call that analog right what matters the most is what you label inside of studio one so because like when you start to bounce things down and like looking for stuff I think this is most important I want to say uh I forget which one was drums and piano guitar and then drums okay so this one's the guitar and then this one is drums now like I say before because these are sort of separate from each other like this is the audio signal. This is the routing situation down here. Up here is a little bit different. So it will just remain contact seven. So it, I would love to see that change. I don't know if there's a button that we need to press inside of Studio One to make that happen. But basically they're, they're kind of separate, but they're connected. It's It's weird like that. So... That's what we're going to do here. We're going to name this drums. Right. Now. As you can see. The only one that's connected. Is, is this one. You will see a highlight down here. But when you click these. These has nothing to do. So this right here in the range. Is just talking to the instrument itself. MIDI wise. These down here is talking to. It's talking to the instrument, but it's routed. It's like this down here is what's give it that connection. You know, if if that makes any sense. All right. So let's do it. Hit the pre here first. Right, whatever. I'm just coming up with something random. So with this guitar, I'm going to change this to um. I'll, let's go with a mint, and this time we're going to go with this style because the melody is different from the the other one. The melody or the, the, the regular one will let you play. It will actually, you know, and then, I'm sorry, the melody. The melody lets you play your own chords, and then the other one is like its own, it has its own presets and playing styles in there for you, and you just hit a series of, of keys to make it 
play like like a real live player so if you if you're not a keyboard i mean a guitar player or a string player or whatever you're picking or a horn player they have they have a you know instrument dedicated for playing styles and then you just you know you pick the keys you pick the notes so that's how that works <laughs> Say I want to add a effect on top of that. Yeah, of course. Let's try the red light. Red light. I'm sorry. The I am. These things are closed. I forgot I closed them. So that's why I'm having a hard time. <laughs> so in in normal cases, I would drag on to the the arranger you know where the midi lives but in this in this case if i do that it's going to add on to the actual instance of contact because all four of these is talking to the same instance so just be careful when you do that so right now all i want to do here is i guess i want to add that to the drums you know let's just be different <laughs> notice it's only affecting the drums everything else is the same and this is why i love working in studio ones because i don't have to pick how many i'm going to work with in the beginning that was a logic thing by the way like you have to pick multi-timbral and the amount that you want to open on that instance before you start working we didn't have to do that. We just opened up some some outputs on it right quick. But I feel like I need to add another drum. And let's go for let's go for something. I don't know. 
it's one of the forties joints what I'm looking for actually actually type it in and I'm just double click and it's just gonna bring it at the bottom and then like before switch over I want this to come out its own so we're gonna say five and by the way you can move these around if you want to if you just grab it somewhere I do about mistake all the time, but now I'm, I'm really trying to <laughs> trying to drag it over. It don't it don't want to drag nowhere. Uh, hang on, let me see. Okay. So keep in mind, if you do that, nothing changes. So you're safe. See, this says four, but this says one. Midi channel one. This says four, but that's because we moved it around. So the configuration will stay. But I, you know, and and you would do this just to keep things organized. Like say you move further in the project, and you you find that you want all the strings to hang out together, the drums and whatever, right? But uh, just keep everything or just make it simple on yourself and on me. <laughs> all right. So now also we'll do we're gonna do what we did before, we'll duplicate this, and this time we're gonna go to five. And it should be playing something. Oh. We have to unlock it here. Gotta remember to do that. <laughs> but in some cases, you might unlock them all, you know, just so you won't forget. You know what I mean? That's totally fine. So I'm pretty much done. That, that's how that works. As 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 we see, everything has its own. So at this point you can do whatever whatever you want and one last thing i want to show you the other thing the the reason why you would want to do it this way sometimes is well you know having independence with all of the tracks if you want to leave it like this and be able to come back and, and make changes or whatnot but sometimes we we want to bounce things down in place and it's just as simple as this just taking this and just bouncing it down and voila and it's the same situation you know now now that this is an audio track it's gonna come on its own channel 
Now, this is all the time routed, and every time you touch it here in the Ranger, it will correspond to what's going on here. And this, these are different, and but this might be a good time to actually color everything the same, just so you, you won't get confused. Now, you do get that option, you know, when you select all of them. All of them will change colors, which is cool. And this one is just outside of it. And again, this is weird, but you can re re rearrange stuff in the arranger. But again, it's not going to affect anything down here. So it's, it's going to take a while to realize what's really going on. What, you know, what's going on here. The only time that this will move is if you go above it, right? because now you came up so just look at these as one anything that's routed to the same thing it's yeah so keep in mind you see it's nothing that's moving yeah so hopefully that helped you guys if you have any questions let me know in the comment section we also have a discord channel for you guys that have random courses if you want to ask there's a whole community you know like-minded people there it's just a family we building join us there on discord all of the links are in, in the description of this video again my name is ella creative sound creator university remember music is art you're the artist paint your picture stay creative without rules mm -hmm.